Today we're going to learn about subtracting vectors. And before we learn subtracting, I want to show you the uh, concept of uh, when we add vectors. If I say 4 plus 3, that's equal to 7. And if I add them in the opposite order, it's still equal to 7. Whereas if I go 4 minus 3, that's equal to 1. But 3 minus 4 is not equal to the same thing. Notice these two are the same, which means addition is commutative. But the, these two are not the same. So subtraction is not commutative. This, is, this holds also true for subtracting vectors, adding and subtracting vectors. We know that if we add two vectors, like a 3 and a 4, we'll get a 5. And we can add those in a different way. So we could go 4 plus 3 instead. And we're still going to get a 5. So this is an example here of adding them in opposite order. We still get the same solution. But when we subtract vectors, first of all, the question is, how can we subtract? Now in order, before we do subtracting orthogonal vectors, let's do subtracting linear vectors. So let's say, for example, if we had a vector like this, or let me actually start over here. Let's say we have a vector like this, that's a 4, and we subtract a vector that is 3. So if we subtract that, we get a vector that is a 1. Notice that this 4 and this 3 are both in the same direction and so we get a 1. Now a different way of doing this, instead of saying 4 minus 3, we could also say 4 plus negative 3. So 4 plus negative 3 is the same as 4 minus 3. So how would that look? Well that would look like this. You'd have the 4, and then you'd have a plus, and then you'd have the negative 3. This is also going to give you the same answer of 1. Now, I want you to notice that the this was a this was subtracting a positive 3, but this is a negative 3. Notice the direction of these two. The positive 3 is to the right, the negative 3 is to the left. Okay? Um, now, how do we do that when we're dealing with vectors? So, in this case, let's push this up a little bit. Let's do the same thing now where we had, let's say, uh, a 4, like this, and we subtract a 3, like this. What's this going to equal? Well, we can now leave the 4 alone, but we can add now a negative 3, and I'm going to do this with variables in a moment. Oops. Yeah. So notice the negative 3 is pointing in the opposite direction to the positive 3. And notice now here I'm saying plus. This is easy now because I know already how to add vectors. And so when I add them, I'll put the 4 down. And now I'll add them head to tail with the negative 3, and I'll get a resultant 
starting from the tail of the first one, going to the head of the last one. So this, this vector is my resultant vector. Now let me do this again. Obviously this is going to be a 5 as well, but the direction of this is important because when you are subtracting vectors, if we did not use this technique, then we would have to draw them tail to tail. So there's two techniques here we're using, and I'll separate them by this line. Okay, this is, let's call this adding the negative. And let's call this tail to tail. So if we write the 4 here, there's my 4, and then the 3 is here. Now we have to figure out which way the resultant is. So I can see here from the one below from the adding the negative that my resultant is up and to the right. So that means it must start here and it must go up there. But notice that there's two possibilities here. I can't just tell the direction looking at the um, the diagram here. With this one, with the adding, I can. I can do that because look carefully here. I'll use a, even a different color here. Here you can see this is adding head to tail. So therefore I know which way my resultant is. It starts at the first tail and it goes to the head of the last one. Whereas on this one up here, this is tail to tail. So there's two different ways of subtracting. Like this is this is one method and here's the other method. Now you might just think, okay, well, method number two is easier. Um, but I also need you to understand method number one. But what we don't know is which way, because we could have, we could, which way is the resultant? That's what I'm trying to get at. Oops. So my point is that I could have gotten the wrong direction here by doing that. Now this would this would have been wrong, but my point is that I don't know just looking at these two vectors if I just look at this and this and they're tail to tail, I don't know which way it goes. Does it go like this or does it go like this? Not sure. And therefore we have to come up with a kind. Now I do know the answer if I look at method number two obviously the answer is here. It's it's the one that's going up and to the right. So this one's wrong. But is there a way to do it only looking at number one? And the way I'm going to show you this is I'm going to change the um, so going back to method number one instead of going four and three let's call it a minus B and again we'll make it like this now this is going to be a is here and B oops let me put it like this here here's a and here is B notice that they're tail to tail now this is exactly the same situation as what I had before except now I don't have any numbers on them I just have A and B. I do know that the resultant is going to be from here to here. And the way I can figure this out or the rule is that the head of resultant touches 
the head of the first term. So in other words, in this case, we're going a minus b. So the first term is a. That means the head of the resultant touches the head of a. That's the way I can tell my direction. This is just a simple rule I've developed which works and is easy to remember. So in other words, if we tried another example, let's try doing one where we say uh, B, and let's say B is like this, and then let's go minus A, and let's say A is like this. Okay, well, we would draw B and then we would put A tail to tail. Okay, so tail to tail for subtraction. And then I have to decide which way my resultant goes. But since my first term is B, now I know that my resultant is going to be pointing <coughs> towards B. And so now I know that this is B minus A. Okay, That little hat on top, I, I could have uh, drawn it like this. I could say it's B minus A. It just means that a, B and A are both, uh, oh, let me change the color on that. It just means that B and A are vectors. Okay, so A was up, B was to the left, and since I'm subtracting, subtracting them, I can put them tail to tail, and I know my resultant has to point towards the head of the first term. Head of resultant touches head of first term. There's my rule. So, and just to verify, in fact, that this is correct, I can do it again using the other method of adding the negative. So if I was to go B plus a negative A where negative A is down, now since I'm adding them, I can add them head to tail and I would go like this for B and then like this for negative A and now you can see that I got the direction correct because my resultant starts at the tail and goes to the head because I'm adding. But in this case, I'm adding a negative. This is still, by the way, equal to B minus A. Okay? Because I added the negative. So that's, in a nutshell, that's a quick way of being able to subtract vectors either by adding the negative or by putting them tail to tail and subtracting them that way. So just to be clear, uh, this is all still using Pythagoras. Uh, this one was tail to tail, this one was adding the negative, but they're still all right angle triangles, so we can always use Pythagoras to calculate the magnitudes of the sides. And we can use Sokotoa to calculate uh, any angles that we desire as well, which we've done before. Okay, um, let's move on. So the next topic is relative velocity. And in relative velocity, we're going to be dealing with uh, common situations would be a boat traveling through water, like a river. Another one is a, an airplane traveling through uh, the air with the wind blowing in a certain direction. So let me draw the what here looks to be like a river. And I'm going to say that the water in the river is traveling to the right. 
and we're going to have a boat starting at one side of the river and, and trying to cross the river, trying to go, go to the other side. So this is like a bird's eye view from above. Now, this vector here is going to be the velocity of the boat with respect to the water. We need to get used to this new type of subscripts where we have two subscripts. And I'll write this, these subscripts down here. And I'll say this is the, so we'll go, these are all velocity, okay? And, but this is the boat with respect to the water. That means that if you were to put the boat in still water, in water that wasn't moving, that's what the, the velocity of the boat would be. But this water is not still water, it's moving water. So we also have the velocity of the water with respect to the ground. So water with respect to ground. Notice this is the B and this is the W. That's where this B and W comes here. Now this one is the water with respect to the ground. And that's where the W and the G come from. Those are the subscripts. Okay. And finally, and I'll, I'll draw this one in a different color, I'll say this, now when I add these two guys together, I'm going to get the resultant vector, and notice they're tail to tail, so I'm going to add them, and I'm going to get the velocity of the boat with respect to the ground. In other words, um, if, if this is my hand here, and this is the boat, the, boi the boat is pointed the boat is pointed, let's put it like this, okay, up, but because the water is pushing it sideways, the boat ends up traveling like that. Okay, so the boat really is trying to just go straight across the river, but since the river water is pushing it sideways, the red vector is actually the velocity of the boat because it's a combination of the boat's m motor pushing it up and the, or what looks like in the up direction from our perspective here on paper, and the velocity of the water pushing it sideways. So let's now write down the final variable and let's do this not in red. The velocity of the boat with respect to the ground. And this is a B and this is a G. Now, if I was to write this equation out, I can tell from this diagram here that if I write this out correctly, I have VBW plus VWG because I'm adding those head to tail. And that's going to give my, me my resultant, which is VBG. Now, I know that these are correct because I can see this on my diagram. But is there a way that I can verify that the subscripts are correct even without having the diagram? And the answer is, yes, there is. And this is another type of a pattern recognition. So. Notice that the common variable here, the common subscript or variable, is the W. Notice the W is there and there. And notice the common variable here is, so if you, if you look at the subscripts, you have two subscripts. The one on the left is the first subscript, and the one on the right is the second subscript. Okay? 
notice that the W occurs in the first subscript and sorry let me say that again I got that wrong in the second subscript and then in the first so they end up you can think of them as kind of canceling out and they disappear and now you end up having this B and this G forming the BG so I mean, I'm not saying this is what's really happening here, but th what's really happening is this uh, diagram that's over here. That's clear. Ex that's a clear expression of what's going on. But in order to understand these subscripts, there's a convention that I've come up with that allows you to get it right and allows you to understand when you're wrong. Now, you might be thinking, hey, adding vectors is commutative and it is so what if we were to write it flipped what if I was to say VWG plus VBW now obviously this should still be correct right it doesn't matter which order we add in so I put the WG first and I put the VW sorry BW second I should still get the resultant BG but with respect to water now where is our common variable? It's still the W, but notice here it comes in first, and here it comes in second. Again, one of the two common variables is in the first location, and the other one is in the second one. In here, it was the second one and the first one, as long as they're not the same. So this is correct. Oh, you guys can't see this because my my pictures in the or my face is in the way so let's put it down pull it down here a little bit this was BG this is correct and so is this one okay um, but what if we were to draw it incorrectly what if we were to let's say somehow get confused let me try messing with this equation such that I know it would be wrong watch if I go BG, so I'll, I'll basically pretend that I'm, I'm going to use the resultant as one of the legs. And I'll say WG is equal to BW. Now, essentially, I've taken this resultant, put it as the first term. I've taken the first term, put it as the second term. And I've taken the second term, BW, and put it as the resultant. Is there a way, without even looking at the diagram, that I can tell that this is wrong? Let's find out. So what is the common variable here? Well, it's the G and the G. Now, notice the G and the G are last and last. And not only that, but the BW, which results here, the B is first, but the W is first. This is wrong. This doesn't work. Okay? Also, and, and similarly up here, the B is first here, and the G is second. Okay? And looking at that again, here, the B is first here, and the G is second. And so you always get BG. Whereas here, notice, the B is first and the W is first. That's not going to result in BW. That's wrong. Also notice the common one is in the same place. It's GG. Second, second. This is wrong. Let's try writing it in a different way now. Where we, there's only, there's only one other wrong way in which we could do it. And let's say the resultant is WG. And now, uh, let's say we have BG plus VWG, uh, not WG, BW. Notice that the common term here is the Bs. And they're both first, and that doesn't work. They have to be different positions. Also notice that the G is second and the W is second. That doesn't work. They have to be first and second, not second and second. 
So this is also wrong. Okay? So now you can tell just by looking at the subscripts that both of these are impossible. <coughs> Obviously, if you look at the vector diagram, you can tell that they're wrong. But my point is, even looking at the subscripts, you can tell that they're wrong. So now that we know how to do them properly, in other words, either this one here or this one here are both correct, we can now go ahead and apply this to questions. And essentially, we're just solving right angle triangles again, so we're going to be using Pythagoras. So the other possibility, instead of water, is air, and that's usually a plane. So we might have, let's say, you can call it the wind or the air. Let's say the, the wind or the air is blowing. Now in this case, we'll, we'll go uh, north, east, south, west. So let's say the wind is, or the air is blowing to the east, or you could say it's from the west. Okay, either way. Um, just to let you know though, actually this is something of an in interesting point. Whenever you look at weather forecasts, uh, they always have the wind direction as from. So in this case, if I draw my arrow to the right, this would be stated as the wind coming from the west. They don't ever specify wind direction as going towards the, the east. So if you see a W in a weather forecast, that means it's from, it means it's, it's, it's from the west. Okay? Anyways, that's not important in our case too much. So now, what if we also have the, um, so by the way, this vector here, what is this? This is the velocity of the air with respect to the ground. Then we've also got, let's say our the plane is headed south. This would be the velocity of the plane with respect to the air. So that's called in some ways that's called the airspeed. In other words, how fast is the plane moving in the air, not with respect to the ground. And so when we add these two vectors, we'll have here and here, and we don't have to add them this way. This is the velocity of the air with respect to the ground. This is the velocity of the plane with respect to the air we're going to get a resultant that is like this. Um, and we'll call this the velocity of the plane with respect to the ground. Now I could have also done this like this. It doesn't matter which order I add them. I could have started here and said this is my velocity of my plane with respect to the air. Now I'm going to add the velocity of the air with respect to the ground. And I'll get my resultant, which is going to be in the same direction and the same magnitude as I first got. Now what I want to do is I'd like to write down these two equations. So Here's my first one, VAG plus VPA is equal to VPG, okay? Here's my second one, VPA plus VAG equals VPG. Now notice, <clears throat> the common subscript here is an A, 
and my A is first and second. Notice my common subscript in this one is A again, second and first. Notice that my resultant is PG in both cases. And notice P is first, G is second. P is first, G is second. So both of these equations are correct. And that's, and that's essentially an example of this concept of relative velocities. Uh, so essentially what's going on here is the plane, let's say this is the plane, the airplane, okay? It's, it's headed um, south. But as it's flying, the air, I don't know if that's a great drawing of a um, airplane, but as it's flying, the airplane is being pushed to the right, or I should say, you know, to the east by the air. And so this is the, f this is the, um, flight path, so to speak, of the plane over the ground, you know, at like three different time intervals. But notice that the plane is not pointed in that direction. The plane is actually po pointed perfectly south. So that's the end of this. This is very similar to the water situation. So that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.